So, the journey of our forefather began. Off he went from the land of Ur, heading west towards Canaan, where God had promised that he would bless his descendants with the land of Canaan. And everywhere that he would look, everywhere that he would turn, would belong to him and to his descendants. And it was very exciting news for Abraham, and he couldn't wait to be off to see this new land that would be for his descendants. Off he went. And while he was getting there, some hiccups came up along the way. During one of the first part of his travels, as he was heading down west towards Canaan, a great famine had hit the land. It hit all across the fertile crest. Everywhere there was no food except in Egypt. So for a little while he had to head down to Egypt in order to escape the famine. Now he knew about the lust of Pharaoh. And he knew that his wife, Sarah, was very beautiful. And it was very common practice that in order for the Pharaoh to get a new wife that he really, 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 really appreciated, he would just kill off the husband and take the wife for his own. And it got Abram's heart beating very fast. Needless to say, he was very afraid for his own life. So when they got to Egypt, he pleaded to his wife and he said, Sarah, when we get to Egypt, say that you're my sister. Hey, don't let anybody know that you're my wife. Otherwise, they're just going to kill me off and then take you as a wife. No, no, no. Just please, for me, just say that you're my sister. That way, they can leave me alone. They're not going to kill me off. Okay. We're good. We're good. We're all right. Okay. Clear. All right. You're my sister. Say that you're my sister. As they were entering into Egypt, they were just telling everybody that Sarah was his sister. And she was very beautiful. She was turning heads. Everyone caught a glimpse of her beauty. And they were amazed. The princes of Egypt all looked at Sarah. And they went over to Pharaoh. They just couldn't stop talking about Sarah. She, she's just an amazing beauty. You can't take her eyes off of her. She's more beautiful than all the people that we have seen here in the land of Egypt. You don't say, said Pharaoh. Someone who's more beautiful than anyone else in the land. Well, let's go pick her up then. Not even a second thought, not even a second look around our glass. He just went over to Abram. He went straight to Sarah, took her as his wife. And as a, um, as, as a betrothal dowry, he gave Abram many wealths. He gave him money and livestock and servants in order to pay for the dowry for Sarah. So Pharaoh took Sarah into his household. And it happened so quick, Abraham was just... Wait, money, livestock, where's Sarah? Wait, wait Pharaoh took Sarah? Uh... <sighs> it happened so fast! What was he gonna do? And Pharaoh is Pharaoh, I mean, he, he can't go up against Pharaoh at the time. So Abraham was... Sarah's gone! Sarah's gone! But not long after Sarah was taken into Pharaoh's household, God looked down at what was happening and knew that wasn't going to fly. He was not going to let that happen to his plans. He struck the house of Pharaoh with a plague unlike any other that he had seen. People were falling left and right, sick. People were crawling with leprosies. Boils and coughs and vomit and just disgusting plague was falling on top of the house of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was just shocked at what was happening. He was like, what? What is going on? What? 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 What's with this plague? Why? Why, why are we covered in this leprosy? Why can't we stop 
coughing it. Why can't we breathe? Sarah? What about Sarah? That's his wife? That's not his, that's his wife? Abram? Being the man of God, Abram? And I took his wife? Now we're at a very scary point. Abram just lied to Pharaoh. And because of that lie, Lord, the Lord struck him with a plague. Pharaoh could have easily gone up to Abraham and just killed him on the spot for the plague. He would have walked up to his house and he would have just slaughtered him for lying to him. Why didn't you tell me it was your wife? Why didn't you tell me it was your, you earned the fall the Lord? the Lord got me in the plague and now there's a plague all over. He could have. He could have. But the Lord protects his own. So when Pharaoh found out that Sarah was his wife, he brought her back. And he was mad. He was still mad. He was yelling and shouting at Abraham. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Look at me. I'm covered in plague. Take her away. Don't, don't, don't worry about anything. Just, just get out of here. Just go. Leave Egypt right now. Just take it all away from us. And maybe this plague will get out. Just go. Get out of here. Get out of my kingdom. Now. So, with very surprised and nervous legs, Abram prepared Sarah gathered up all the wealth that Pharaoh gave him and out of Egypt they went. Out they go. <laughs> it, it wasn't the best start for our great father Abram. We consider Abram a man of righteousness and he is. But sometimes we forget about this one funny story. And it's the fact is, this was his first story. The first story of Abram was he lied to Pharaoh. Kind of a rocky start. Not the best foot for his amazing journey. Going off towards promises of wealth and splendor and the first thing that he did on his adventure was he lied and rather than being blessed rather than other people being blessed as God had promised he just made Egypt covered in plague not the best start but the but the cool thing about Abram, the cool thing about his story was that his story does not end there. Just because he had a bad start, just because he had a bad beginning, that does not mean his story is going to end badly. He still was prone to listening to God. And in fact, after that episode in Egypt, he has a little talk with God. And God promises him that he will still give his descendants the land of Canaan. And to show that he was devoted to this promise, Abram gathered up sacrifices. He gathered up a cow and a ram and some birds that the Lord had commanded him to gather up. He cut each one in half except for the birds and laid them aside as burnt offerings. But he didn't set them on fire yet. To show that he was committed, he just waited there until the Lord was going to come. And as he was waiting, there were many birds and scavengers trying to eat his covenant. But he stayed committed to where he was. He chased off all of the birds to make sure the sacrifice stayed safe. And just when he was about to drop into a deep sleep, just when he was about to faint from the exhaustion of making sure the sacrifice stayed safe, God comes down, a fire pot and a torch, going through the sacrifices. 
and promising Abram, Canaan will belong to your descendants because I promised it. And I do not break my promises. My promises are above my own word. If I say you're going to get Canaan, you will get Canaan. And no matter what kind of mistakes you make, Abram, even though I want you to listen, if you keep following me, I will hold on to my promises. Isn't that great that we have a God like that? Many more stories were going to come up for Abram. And yeah, he'll have more funny stories just like this one. But one thing that will always remain about Abram throughout all of his stories is that he was a man that would always follow God. And for that reason, he was credited with righteousness.